What's up everybody, Gamerboy for Life here, and today we're going to be starting a new series here on YouTube. Um, in this series, we're going to be creating a Minecraft hack client for version 1.20.2. I previously made a series on 1.8.8. It did really well on YouTube. You guys seem to really enjoy it. Um, a common thing I was getting though, since it was on such an old Minecraft version, it couldn't connect to a lot of the newer servers. I believe at this moment of recording this, the newest Minecraft version is like 1.21.2 or something like that. Um, unfortunately, the tool we're going to be utilizing to actually pull the Minecraft source code, it's not updated that far yet. So we're just going to be going on 1.20.2. This version can still connect to most of the modern servers. Um, so I guess let's just jump straight into this. Uh, for this, you're going to need to download three things. The first thing is going to be the Eclipse IDE. Now, you technically don't have to use Eclipse. You can use any IDE you want. Uh, for the sake of this series, though, I am going to be utilizing Eclipse as I am more um, attuned to it. This is why I learned how to program Java on. Um, I think the other one is IntelliJ. So IntelliJ. I probably spelled that wrong. Don't, yeah. I, I... Whatever. You guys could just Google IntelliJ. If you want that ID, you can download it. Um, so once you have Eclipse downloaded, you're going to need to download Java JDK 17. I'm going to leave links to all this stuff in the description. Uh, this one's on Oracle's website. When you go there, it will take you here. As you can see, Java SE Development Kit. Just download it for whatever operating system you're, you're on. Um, 9 out of 10 people watching this are most likely going to be on Windows. So just go ahead and download the Windows X64 installer right there. Nice and simple. Last thing we're going to need to download is MCP Reborn. Uh, for my original series, we used normal uh, MCP. Unfortunately, those original creators no longer actually, uh, from my knowledge, they don't develop MCP for any of the newer versions. Um, but from what I know, Hexception, yep, Hexception, I, I believe he is a fellow YouTuber and King Devil or Dev and L. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know if you are a YouTuber or not, I didn't look into it, but we're going to be utilizing their tool called MCP Reborn. I do not take any credit for this tool. All credits go to these two guys right here. They are wonderful programmers, and I thank you for making tools like this so people like me can break Minecraft. Uh, anyways, to download this, you're going to click on Code and Download Zip File. Once it downloads, you can go ahead and close out of your web browser of choice um, for this. You're going to need to create a folder in which you want basically where you're going to be storing these files. A lot of people just do it right here on the desktop. So you just right click new folder, name your client. We're not going to be doing that for this uh, just because I, I keep everything a little organized. So let me go in here. As you can see, I have my 1.8.8 clients in here, but we're going to be doing for 1.20.2. Uh, I am going to be doing the same thing I did with the original series i do have a second client that i'm working on it's kind of like my test dummy so i i've verified all this stuff works for now just go ahead and create a new folder um you can name it mcp mcp reborn or you could just name it whatever you're going to name your client uh for this one i'm probably going to just name it uh i don't even know what i want to name this one what are some cool names Alrighty, we're i'm just gonna name this client rim it's something nice and simple so once you created the folder, go ahead and open that folder up. And then inside of that folder, you're going to create two more folders. One's going to be named Workspace. And then the second one, we're going to name Gradle. Then open up your Downloads folder. This is where you should have your MCP Reborn. Um, you can use, uh, what is it, like WinRAR. Um, you can use 7-Zip, any type of basically compressed file extractor. I'm using WinRAR. So I'm just going to right click and extract. Perfect. And then once you have it extracted, go ahead and open that folder up. You're going to have another folder. Open that one. You're going to highlight all of these files and then drag and drop it into the Gradle folder that you created. Not Workstation. Go into Gradle. Once you do that, you can close out of all these windows and you can delete your downloads. I always keep my downloads deleted. Next step for getting this set up, we're going to open up Eclipse. Alrighty. So once you have Eclipse open, yours might look a little different depending if you have any themes or anything installed. 
if you just installed eclipse though um from the installer you should have a screen like this it's basically going to have you select uh where your workspace is going to be so you're going to go ahead and click browse mine's on my desktop so this is going to be the folder that i had you create um so let's see 1.20 rim and where it says workspace and gradle you're going to open up workspace since there's nothing in there and then select folder and launch what Eclipse is going to do is start generating all the Eclipse uh, files necessary in order for us to actually utilize the Gradle project. Now, before we continue on, from what I know, again, don't quote me on this. I don't know everything about Java. I don't know everything about Eclipse. From what I know, if you have older versions of Eclipse, you need to go to, uh, where is it? Help Eclipse Marketplace. Wait for it to load. By the way, in this marketplace, you can install like themes and all types of stuff. I'm not going to be doing that as like I already installed mine in dark theme. Um, anyways, if you're on older versions, you're going to search for Gradle in here. You're going to find a Gradle or sorry, build ship Gradle integration and click install. It's going to have pop ups. Just keep clicking accept install. Once it's fully done downloading, restart Eclipse IDE. Now, if you just went and installed Eclipse, it should come with Gradle by default. So you don't need to worry about this step. Alrighty, so once you're all caught up here, you're gonna have a workspace like this. As you can see, it's very empty. On the left side, we're gonna go to Import Projects, Gradle, Existing Gradle Project, and click Next. Uh, you might have another screen that pops up. Just go ahead and click next. You're going to go to the part where it says project root directory. You're going to click on browse. You're going to go back to those folders that you've created that I had you create before. Grim. This time, ooh, has burp, excuse me. This time you're going to open up the Gradle folder and you click select folder and then finish. This is going to import the Gradle project that uh, Hexception and uh, oh, I'm blanking on the other guy's name. But those two guys that I gave credit to earlier, this is their project we're importing for now. So just give it a couple minutes, depending on the speed of your computer. This might take anywhere from like 10 seconds to a couple minutes. So just give it a bit. Alrighty, so once it's done importing, you should get a folder on your left side called MCP Reborn. It's going to have all these different files in there. We're not going to touch anything on the left side. Um, for now, all we're going to do is down here where it says Gradle Task and Gradle Executions. So these are the only two items we're going to be worrying about today. Um, if you do not see these, go up to Window, Show View, and click on Gradle Task and Gradle Executions. For now, open up MCP Reborn. Go down to MCP. You're going to double click on Setup. Now this can also take a few minutes. I think on average, it takes my computer about three minutes to do this. At any point would, uh, while we're doing this Gradle stuff, if you have any errors that arrive, what you're gonna do is open up Minecraft Launcher. I probably should have told you guys to do this before we actually started. But if you receive any errors, you're just gonna open up Minecraft and you're going to make sure you're on version 1.20.2, whichever version you are doing this for, and you're going to make sure you click play. That way all of the um, items can download. That way it can copy everything over. So we'll just let this finish up here and I will be back to you when it's done. Alrighty, so mine just finished up. It took about 265 seconds. I do have a lot of stuff open. I do have my other client and Google and tons of shit open. Anyways, moving on. Uh, once you have done that, go back over to Gradle Task. You're gonna then do Copy Assets. Again, this might take a few seconds. It shouldn't take nearly as long as the setup did. The setup's typically gonna take the longest amount of time for this. Alrighty, and we are back. That only took 24 seconds. That wasn't that bad. Go back to Gradle Task. This time you're going to go to IDE. You're going to click double click on Eclipse. This is going to generate all the files for Eclipse. Um, yeah, that one only took a little over a second. Go back to Gradle Executions. The last thing we're going to do, you're going to go to Forge Gradle Runs and double click Gen Eclipse Runs. 
Now, this one might fail. Uh, as you can see, this one did fail for me. That is fine. Um, I don't, I'm not going to lie. I don't know exactly why it does this all the time, but uh, it's okay. It's not going to break anything. Uh, anyways, after you've done all those, um, we should be good to move forward. Next thing we're going to do on this left side, you're going to right click and click refresh. Wait for it to uh, finish building on the bottom left. Well, anyways, while it does that, I can show you this. So now you should have a source main Java. And when you open it up, you're going to see a tons of stuff that honestly, we're not too worried about right now. Um, I'm actually going to click on these three dots, package presentation and change it over. That way it's a little more organized. But these three, we're not really going to be touching for a while. Um, for the most part, we're only going to be messing. Well, we are going to end up creating a new package in there, but that's going to be in the next episode. Uh, to finish this episode off, just to make sure everything you've done has worked, you're going to come up here to where it says Debug Java. Click on the little arrow next to it. Go to Debug Configurations. Click on Java application and on this top left one, it should say new launch configuration. Go ahead and press that. Perfect. So now just follow closely here because if you mess something up, it will break it when you try to launch the game on main class. This one's going to be easy. We're going to do MCP period client period start. And that's easy. So we'll apply next. Go over to arguments. VM arguments, you're going to do dash XMX 1G space dash XMS 1G. This is basically just stating how much memory you're going to let Java, uh, like inside of Eclipse, how much memory you're going to let it use. Um, you should know how much RAM your computer has. If not, just right click on your, ah, I can't talk. Right click your taskbar, click on task manager. That's going to open this up. You're going to go over to performance and right where it says memory, this should tell you how much you have. I have 32 gigs, so I could I could totally put up to 32. Um, typically, you don't want to use more than half your total amount of RAM. Even then, it's a little overkill just for the programming part. Um, if you do have quite a bit, though, I would recommend putting four gigs. Four gigs is normally perfect sweet point that's what i'm going to be using is four gigs um so go ahead and click apply last thing we're going to do on this page where it says working directory you're going to click on other and then click workspace this should pop up you're going to click the arrow next to mcp reborn you're going to click on the run folder and click ok click apply close so now we should be all set up if you come up here and click debug or run Gradle, it doesn't matter which one you do. I'm all, I'm king of misspelling stuff. Yeah, my bad. So right here, start has to have a capital S. My apologies. Now, if you click debug and give it a second, it should eventually launch Minecraft. Press enter to enable the narrator. And bam, now we're inside of Minecraft. Let me go ahead and just turn sounds down real quick. Um, what I recommend doing right now, go ahead and just create a world. I'm going to name it MCP test world, allow cheats, generate the new world. And there you go. Now you're just inside a normal Minecraft. And yeah, that's pretty much all we're going to be doing for this video. In the next video, I'm going to be going through and actually setting up the, uh, everything else needed for this. So that's going to be our main client class uh, doing like on render, like the module, module manager, key listeners and all that stuff is going to be in the next video. Um, if you guys do want to see this series go on for a while, make sure you give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe, bot the subscribe button, comment down below uh, what you would like me to try to accomplish in this series. Right now, I do have the th uh, first four parts of this series already kind of planned out. Part one, we just did today. Part two is going to be the module system and testing just a simple mod. Um, part three, I'm going to be creating my own custom click GUI, which I didn't do in my old series. I just used someone else's. We're going to be making everything from scratch here in this series. Um, in part four, I'm basically just going to be adding some mods to kind of fill it in a little. 
Uh, if you guys do want to see something like custom though, go ahead, drop a comment. Please make sure you subscribe and like the video. Uh, that really tells me you want to see more of videos like this. Anyways, other than that, guys, take care. Have a great night and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace out.